So as, as we're getting ready to launch the Polaron G2 rocket, we decided to make a smaller version first. Uh, this is the Axion G2 uh, that we've flown previously with smaller boosters. What we're using for this test are the lower half of the Polaron G2 um, boosters. Um, and we're also testing the uh, new retaining mechanism for the boosters. Um, we, haven't ever, we haven't tested this one yet at uh, full pressure, and we also wanted to test the synchronization of the launcher itself. Um, the clamps themselves are made out of aluminium with steel pins, and also uh, the sustainer clamp is made out of aluminium with steel loops. Uh, there's a lot of force that's transferred, and that's why we're using steel for that. Uh, at full pressure, uh, 250 psi, there's about uh, 340 newtons that's passing through that connection, and this, that's shared amongst two pins per booster. Uh, so all up uh, at full pressure, that's about uh, a thousand newtons that's pushing up on this ring. Uh, for this reason, we have a, uh, a thrust ring which is made out of fiberglass, it's about two millimeters high. Uh, that's glued to the sustainer and that transfers the force between the sustainer between the clamp and the sustainer uh, and the same for the boosters except they're the thrust rings on the other side because the force is acting in the other direction um, and that stops the clamps from sliding off. Uh, there's a, uh, a second pair of clamps up here and they're responsible for keeping the, uh, sus the boosters uh, aligned with the sustainer so during boost they're not actually transferring force up here, they're um, just keeping everything aligned. On the final boosters, they'll be located at the very top, uh, but for here, they're here at the moment. For this test, we've got the parachutes mounted on the side of the rocket, but for the final uh, rocket, they'll be mounted in the space um, between the booster segments. And the parachute is simply held in with a kind of a, like a door hinge mechanism. So as the booster releases and the uh, sustainer pulls the wire out, the parachute falls out. The Axion rocket we are testing is on the left and the final Polaron G2 rocket is on the right. To test the rocket we drove to New South Wales Rocketry Association's new high power launch site about 6 hours out of Sydney. For the first test we used 2.1 litres of water in each booster and 2.3 litres with foam in the sustainer. As we got up to around 140 psi the main nozzle started leaking, but we continued until about 180 and we launched just before we lost too much water from the sustainer. Four, three, two, one, go! <laughs> The flight went well otherwise, and the rocket reached 794 feet. Nice job, George. Well done, George. Thanks. Excellent. Well done. We set the rocket up for a second go and replaced the main stage nozzle seal and this time it held. We managed to get all the way up to 200 psi but what we didn't see from the launch position was that one of the boosters also had developed a leak and lost about half the water before launch.
The second problem was that another booster released just slightly too late and as a result tumbled away from the rocket. And just to add insult to injury, the high angle of attack caused by weather cocking and the asymmetric thrust made the last booster separate sideways and break off a fin. The sustainer still powered up to 789 feet and landed safely under parachute. We learned some important lessons from this flight and will make the necessary modifications for the next flight.